Hilton, and oh, the ball's loose. He'll cough it back up, and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown. Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right, throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone. Comes in, fires, deflected, no, rebound, score! The hand ball shot, off the post, score! Good try kick, goes in! Taken away on a stretcher, shot, score! Cornell down the field, end zone! That is a touchdown! In, in, and oh, the ball's loose! He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown! Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right, throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone! Comes in, fires, deflected, no! Rebound! Try a kick. Goes in! Take it away. In and oh, the ball's loose. He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown. Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right, throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone. Comes in, fires, deflected, no, rebound, score! Oh, the hand ball shot, off the post, score! Try a kick, goes in! Taken away on a stretcher, shot, score! Cornell down the field, end zone! That is a touchdown! In, 
and oh, the ball's loose. He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown. Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right, throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone. And fires, deflected, no, rebound, score! The hand ball shot off the post, score! Try a kick, goes in! Taken away on a stretcher, shot, score! Cornell down the field, end zone! That is a touchdown! In, in and oh, the ball's loose! He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Rodriguez rolls out to his right, throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone! In, fires, deflected, no, rebound! Try a kick. Goes in! Taken away on a stretcher. Shot score! Cornell down the field. End zone! That is a touchdown! In, in and oh, the ball's loose. He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown! Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right. Throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone. Ducks in, fires, deflected, no, rebound, score! The hand ball shot, off the post, score! Try a kick, goes in! Taken away on a stretcher, shot, score! Cornell down the field, end zone, that is a touchdown! In and oh, the ball's loose. He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown. Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right, throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone. Ducks in, fires, deflected, no, rebound, score! The hand ball shot off the post, score! Try a kick, goes in! Taken away on a stretcher, shot, score! Cornell down the field, end zone! That is a touchdown! In, in and oh, the ball's loose! He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown! Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right, throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone. Ducks in, fires, deflected, no, rebound! Try a kick. Goes in! Taken away on a stretcher. Shot score! Cornell down the field. End zone! That is a touchdown! In, in and oh, the ball's loose. He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown. Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right. Throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone. Ducks in, fires, deflected, no, rebound, score! The hand ball shot, off the post, score! Try a kick, goes in! Taken away on a stretcher, shot, score! Cornell down the field, end zone, that is a touchdown! In, and oh, the ball's loose. He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown. Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right, throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone. Ducks in, fires, deflected, no, rebound, score! The hand ball shot off the post, score! Try a kick, goes in! Taken away on a stretcher, shot, score! Cornell down the field, end zone!
that is a touchdown! In and oh, the ball's loose. He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown. Oh, oh, Rodriguez rolls out to his right, throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone. And fires, deflected, no, rebound, score! The hand ball shot off the post, score! Try a kick, goes in! Taken away on a stretcher, shot, score! Cornell down the field, end zone! That is a touchdown! In, in and oh, the ball's loose! He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown! Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right, throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone! Ducks in, fires, deflected, no, rebound! Try a kick. Goes in! Taken away on a stretcher. Shot score! Cornell down the field. End zone! That is a touchdown! In, in and oh, the ball's loose. He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown! Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right. Throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone. Ducks in, fires, deflected, no, rebound, score! The hand ball shot, off the post, score! Try a kick, goes in! Taken away on a stretcher, shot, score! Cornell down the field, end zone, that is a touchdown! In and oh, the ball's loose. He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown. Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right, throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone. Ducks in, fires, deflected, no, rebound, score! The hand ball shot off the post, score! Try a kick, goes in! Taken away on a stretcher, shot, score! Cornell down the field, end zone! That is a touchdown! In, in and oh, the ball's loose! He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown! Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right, throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone. Ducks in, fires, deflected, no, rebound! Try a kick, goes in! Taken away on a stretcher, shot, score! Cornell down the field, end zone! That is a touchdown! In, in and oh, the ball's loose! He'll cough it back up and he'll get across for the oh, touchdown! Oh, oh, oh. Rodriguez rolls out to his right, Throws it back in the end zone, intercepted in the back of the end zone. Ducks in, fires, deflected, no, rebound, score! The hand ball shot, off the post, score! Try a kick, goes in! Taken away on a stretcher, shot, score! Cornell down the field, end zone, that is a touchdown! In and oh, the ball's loose. He'll call.
passed around the boards. That's Stremley all the way up, tape to tape to Benson. Our apologies as we've been dealing with some technical difficulties. And it looks like our sound got knocked off, but we've got that back and fixed. Here we are, 10 and a half left to go here in the first. And two nothing for the Nor'easters. Salve is gonna have to figure th things out quick. Just gotta button up on the defensive side and, and get more pressure on this Nor'easters defense. Not too many shots faced by Gerard as he fights one off there. So 10-10 left to play here in the first. Last time these two teams met, you talked to Logan Calder before the game. Had a hat trick against these Nor'easters at the time. The Seahawks were ranked number 14 in the country. UNE is now at number nine. Well, it'll be a big opportunity for the Seahawks if they could be able to get one over UNE tonight but a little bit of work to do. And again, that last, that last meeting that these two teams had, UNE did take a two nothing lead, but the Seahawks came back and prevailed six to four. So not in, not in two uh, unique waters here are the Seahawks. Now a penalty to kill. So Walensky in the box for two minutes. Caden Tenkoppel as that one rifled off of the side glass. And into the Seahawks bench area. Spooked some of the game staff <laughs> down there right on the corner. Azano. Pinned in along the side boards. Sakuko trying to get that one out. And they just track it all the way back down. And I feel like this is a repetition point. Pucks going out of play. Another one out of play. And once again, here's A face-off. It's, it's fixed. It's fixed. Yep. Shot score. And UNA three. Salve still the score as a power play goal gets scored. Seahawks just really not helping themselves at all on the defensive end. I get they're a man down, but got to make more of a stand than that. Three nothing now. Nor'easters are up, and the Seahawks have to pull it together here. Not even 11 minutes into this one. And the Seahawks, Seahawks have used their timeout as they find themselves down three early in this one. The timeout called by the Seahawks. We'll take the timeout quickly as well. You're watching Salve Regina Ice Hockey on Pins Only Sports Network. After the timeout, and that's the only timeout for the Seahawks for tonight. And they do it early on in the first period. We're still midway through this first period. It's been an unsettling game for Seahawks fans. 
Though then again, there's still a lot of hockey to play and we've seen crazier things happen. Absolutely, Seahawks on home ice. Somewhat hot here, but down three goals, got some work to do. Azano tries to push that one out along the side boards. Can be picked up. And then cycled through the corner. They came back up top looking there for the 27. That one's gonna get sent all the way down. Brennan Kim. Line change goes as Walensky and Price back out. And a lifted puck. Did that hit the ceiling? We're going to get a too many men on the ice call on Salve. I think that puck might have actually <laughs> dinged the rafter. Very well may have. That was a high send. The Braden Paquette's going to go to the box and serve the penalty for too many men, and it's been miscue after miscue here in the first period. And you saw the Seahawks enter the offensive zone, and Mulera and Azano collided with one another, trying to set up in the offensive zone. That's just been a microcosm of the first 11 minutes here. And a whistle, and another arm up and this time thankfully it's going to be a penalty on university of new england so the seahawks finally get a break their way and the nor'easters shoot down their own man advantage could have been a pivotal one shay court munch to the box for two i mean already one for one today they could have made it two for two make it a four nothing lead but we'll play four on four now eight left to go here in the first Shot right over top as that one came flying off of the stick of Malera. Looking for Kim on the back line. Hoon Kim for Brennan Kim. Malera trying to dance inside. Malera gets dumped down. No call from the referees as the puck gets dumped out of the zone. From the eight of Colin Heinold. Craftfully carried as Malera works with Walensky. Into the corner. Nowhere to go for the Seahawks as that one gets taken away by Jared Christie. Pitzer and a good dispossessed that time was the 19 of Logan Calder. Calder, backside boards try to flick one out into the center. And an opportunity there for Kroon along the blue line. Down in the corner for Seth Benson. Benson trying to get into that center slot. Rubbed out of the play and it's carried up the boards by Sakucho. From the blue line, hard shot that came off of Stretter. And another goal is scored by UNE. It's 4-0. 14 seconds left on the Paquette penalty. Actually, the Paquette penalty seems to be over. Yeah, that's 14 seconds left on the, uh, on the penalty to UNE. So the Paquette's penalty just ended there. So that might go in as an even strength goal. Just a tough bounce for the Seahawks there. Del Tufo unable to keep that one out. Now a little bit of conversation here between Paquette and the referee. Oh, because it was four, is it four aside? Hey, 
Seems to be some kind of miscommunication. They've put eight seconds back on the clock on Paquette's penalty, so it was not zeros, it was eight, and because it's for a side, the penalty doesn't release. Now the penalty, however, will release as that expires, and that'll put a very, very, very brief for two and one, and then out goes the six of Mike Tersani, and we're back to five-a-side hockey. But four nothing New England here in the first. Not the dream start, obviously, for the Seahawks, but all they can do is put their head down and, and go back to work and cut into this lead. Chuko. And it gets turned for the 44 of Garrett. Smelly shot came from Damon Zimmer, who zipped down the ice. That's a Azano right on the side boards. The second of his chances tonight. He's, he's missed the net both times, but that's just, again, been a microcosm of the Seahawks efforts thus far. It's been, though, this line, at least the combination sort of of this line with Kim Smerly Zimmer that have been Now this one will go back down for Kyle. Azano. And how about this, a switch in net. Levi Mitchell in net now for Salve. Not all those goals were Necessarily Del Tufo's fault, but. Off the side boards and through the center, Hamill. As that one will go all the way down, trying to be reached by Dylan Price. Price can't reach it. And it tracks back into the neutral zone. Paquette along the near side boards. Hard shot in the one hit traffic. Didn't even actually get through to Gerard. Line changes ensue for the Seahawks. For the five of Seth Benson. Around the backside boards once again, and this one will pop out. And it's University of New England taking it away again. Kuzmich. In the corner, hard shot, blocked by a few defenders, and Kuzmich had it again in a shot that goes over top of Mitchell. Save made by Gerard. And that may have been the first true open ice attempt that we've seen so far tonight here in this first period, Johnny Malera with the opportunity there. And the Nor'easters let the wrong guy have that much room. Malera, one of the Seahawks elite skaters, which is right into the breadbasket of Gerard. To mention things about Levi Mitchell Jr. from Alberta, Canada, three games played on the season 0-0-1, oh, oh, 3.92 goals against average, 77.3 save percentage this year. As he came in in relief of Del Tufo, who just didn't have it tonight. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't got it, but it's, it's the message that Zach Klein preaches to these guys. Next guy up, you know. 2.38 
left to play here in what has been an absolutely very long first period. Stoppage after stoppage. And most of those have been goals for the Nor'easters. As we approach 8.15 p.m. already. This one will be gloved by the Nor'easters, kept into the zone. Smart play from Colin Einold. For the six of Mike Tersoni at the blue line though, this one will get taken away. Brighton fires one, hits the glass and comes back down. Brighton will chase it into the corner boards as he hit Kevin O'Keefe. Puck pops out, carried through. For the 16 of Jaden Price and Price had nowhere to go, ran out of real estate. Alden Curran. As this one gets taken the opposite direction and going right through that center lane. It was a 77 of Caden Krause and the lane just closed up right when he got to the backside of the circles. Under two minutes to go here now. The Seahawks would love to at least get a, a good chance here on Gerard before the first period ends to give them some kind of momentum going into the break. 90 ticks from the end of the first. Carried right up along the Salve bench area. Nowhere to go for Brennan Kemp. Hamill, Hamill fires one and that one went off of the edge of the glove of Gerard. Kim on a shot again from Dylan Price and off of the edge of, of the glove of Gerard. Seahawks putting together some chances down on this end. Big hit from behind, no call from the officials is going hard into the boards. Were they Seahawks defender? For the three of Chip Hamlet. Hamlet will dump that one down. There is certainly gonna be a lot to talk about in the locker room in between this first and second period. Logan Calder. We'll have no one to send that one back to. O'Keefe sends it into the neutral zone. Shuko to the boards and this one will be pinned by Winslow as the horn will sound and end the first. It is four nothing at the end of the first. And we'll take the quick break. You're watching Salve Seahawks Ice Hockey on Fans Only Sports Network.
Pat Jones alongside Bobby Olson. Second period about to get underway. I just looked at the bench at assistant coach Chris Davis, and I think his emotions probably are sort of ours right now. A lot of long faces and a lot of questions of what in the world did just happen. I mean, Seahawks just got caught on their heels. The Nor'easters put up four, but all you can do is is put that behind you and, and just come out like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. And hopefully put a couple on the board and cut into this Nor'easter lead. You can't get all four back at once. Levi Mitchell in net. Will go in relief the rest of the way. After that timeout, he came in in relief of Anthony Del Tufo. 4 nothing Nor'easters, and we're underway here in the second. Quickly headed down the ice is Dylan Price. Price along the backside boards. Over top of Kim, this one's gonna scoot all the way down. No icing is far enough back and chasing it hard were a couple of different Seahawks players. Most notably is the 81 of Joe Kyle. And a save made by Mitchell. Or my apologies, I'm gonna check that. I believe that might have been Brennan Paquette in the corner. Off the side boards and it loops around. Sent back to the blue line and this will be carried back defensively by the Nor'easters. Picked up by the 17 of Shuko. Hard shot up over top of Mitchell. Falls down for the 73 of Brendan Kim. He can't get a full piece on it. Comes back to the blue line for Colin Heinold. A big defensive hit as the puck squirts all the way down the ice. No icing called. May have deflected. Off the backside boards once again. And the Seahawks just can't go anywhere. Caden Krause tried to send that one and nowhere to go. Nor'easters are just everywhere. I feel like I'm watching a New Jersey Devils game out of the mid 90s and they're playing trap hockey. There's just absolutely nowhere and they're gonna dump this one all the way down and we're gonna get well, no, we're not going to get an icing because UNE is going to get caught for too many men on the ice. That may have been the best moment of the game so far for the Seahawks because they're going to get a power play as Jaden Price is going to get sent to the box. I well, caught my attention for a minute. You saw Mitchell coming to the bench. He must have seen a delayed penalty call. I thought maybe we'll get our third goalie of the game for the Seahawks, but nope, just a delayed penalty. So the Seahawks look to cut into this lead here with a man advantage. Whistle and a false start on the faceoff. It's going to be a five yard penalty. We'll repeat the down. <laughs> are they going to reset? Yeah, they are. So they're going to reset the penalty clock and then reset the game clock. Face off, one back by Calder, and this one ends up coming all the way back to Mitchell. Brendan Kim to the corner. Horseshoes that one around, looking for Benson. Benson comes away with it. Back up top for Malera. 
Malera sends that one across and it bounced off of Kim and across the blue line. And Malera will have to chase this all the way back. Malera and Benson as he picked that one up from Mitchell. Johnny Malera is just going to go coast to coast himself and gets rubbed off of the play. On the opposite side by Alex Sheehy. Trying to find that center slot right there and an opportunity from Calder and it hit traffic. Looking for Calder again in the center. Kim. Bauman. Popped up over top and it's been on a run and the string save made by Mitchell as he stretched out and stopped she. That might be the highlight of the game so far for Salve. Absolutely. Not much to set up there on the power play. Had a couple, couple moments there, a couple good shots, but then a two on one the other way somehow for the Nor'easters. Seahawks really have to button up on defense. There is still 45 seconds left to go. On the advantage, Bauman. Benson, Benson tried to turn that one, was looking for a wraparound, nowhere to go. And it will come all the way back down for Mitchell. I guess if you're gonna have an off game, you have it now, you get it out of the system, you turn around and realize you just gotta go to work next week because you do this next week, your season's over. Correct, and the Seahawks, I mean, they, they've been really hot on home ice. I'll, I said it once, I'll say it again. And and sometimes a wake-up call is just as good as a big win. So, again, lots of, lots of hockey left. Let's not get too negative over here. But, again, wake-up call isn't, isn't the worst thing in the world come this time of year. Shoemaker tries to poke that one forward. Opportunity comes on the stick and it's swept around by Walensky. Icing will get negated as before it reached the end line, Dylan Price got there. Zimmer. Backside corner. Walensky. Tried to send that one around for Brunton. Paquette up top and it's gonna get carried out of the zone and Paquette just hit hard into the 25 of Noah Shredder. That'll wake you up. That'll get your team going. And maybe that's actually what the Seahawks need to do here is increase the physicality of the game a little bit and see if, obviously to an extent, and see if maybe that can shake the Nor'easters a little. I mean, they should try anything in their tool bag at this point. Hamill tried to send that one around the boards, kept in at the blue line there by Smerley. Smerley sent one. And that gets knocked away by Gerard. Billy Gerard, 6'1 junior from Boca Raton, Florida. And for all things being, I never really imagined Florida as a hockey state until obviously the Florida Panthers and, the, and then the Tampa Bay Lightning. But in honesty, the amount of players that we're seeing coming out of Florida at high caliber these days is just impressive. And absolutely, I mean, it's, a, it's an impressive state. I mean, hockey aside, you know, sunshine state. California and Florida have somehow turned into hockey states in this country. Who'd have thought? Blue line play. As Ten Capel sends that one down. Kim dumped it, looking for Calder. It's picked back up by the Nor'easters once again and carried out of the neutral zone as this one will get dumped into the corner for Curran. Curran still battling for it and Curran will just sweep that one. Malera. We'll dump this down onto the end board, chased by Kyle. 
Caden Krause trying to get in the way of things and it gets sent all the way back into the Seahawks defensive zone. UNE content to ride this one a little bit with a four nothing lead. They're playing dump and chase hockey and they're gonna just let Salve have to chase this game. Jaden Price along with Garrett Devine. Azano. Hard shot off the backside board, came in the opposite side as Calder's trying to move something. And the center, Olinsky. And that one will go up into the Seahawks bench and they stop it to play. Things seem to have evened out here now, eight minutes into the second period. Obviously a lopsided first, but the Seahawks starting to settle into the UNE zone and get some, some quality chances, just yet to find the back of the net, but feels like it's coming. Seeing a little bit of a line shake as well, too, as we're starting to see some different pairings out on the ice right now. As we see Hoon Kim out there with Brunton and Smerly. So they're running actually three defenders right now to go with Bauman. And that will be out of play. Zimmer is the other forward. So that's a kind of interesting combination. We've seen them go three defenders, two wingers. We've seen them go three forwards, a winger, and one defender. <laughs> like <they're, laughs> Zach Glenn's just shaking it up right now. Say, what's going to actually work? Do I need to? Do I need to kind of like play back a little bit? Do I need to play a five back <laughs> like in soccer almost? Right. We were talking about it earlier. I mean. Might as well get all the tools out of the tool bag at this point. Around the backside boards for Gerard to shepherd that one. 11 and change left to go here in the second. And there's a huge hit from Smerley. Carried out of the zone by Winslow. Dumped all the way down, and that is a very long <laughs> distance for a whistle. And a little bit of chirping going on as they come back down on the icing call. Now it looked like it was perhaps Brennan Paquette and one of the Nor'easter players have a little chirp. Paquette's gonna go to the face-off circle here against Chuko. Good dispossession play from Kim. Paquette along the side boards as he bothered the 14 of Winslow. Kroon. Arm goes up from the referees. We're gonna get icing again and a stoppage of play. Coming up tomorrow on Fans Only Sports Network, Salve Regina Seahawks men's lacrosse season gets underway. 1 p.m. face-off time from top of field as the Seahawks take on the UMass Boston Beacons. We'll have the game for you right here on Fans Only Sports Network. You can go to fansonlysports.com slash Salve Seahawks and be able to catch all the Salve Seahawks action broadcasted by Fans Only Sports Network. It's lacrosse season. It's baseball season, Matt. <laughs> it's baseball season. Baseball season about, yeah, well, in, in that respect, Seahawks baseball about to get underway as well. I actually may have the honor of joining them on their Florida trip. It's part of the, uh, the work study internship I have here at Salve Regina. Get a little bit, get a little bit of sun and some baseball. Maybe scout some hockey players if we're talking Florida <laughs> hockey, you know. <laughs> if I can bring some guys this way. In front, and say by Mitchell as he sprawled out right on top was Jake Buss. And Jared Christie there as well, too. 
Bouncing puck through the neutral zone, carried here by Price. Calder back out on the ice along with Azano. And that one will be snagged by Gerard on the attempt from the corner. And guess who? Yeah, it was Logan Calder. The Seahawks really pressing here. We're getting on the likes of, of Calder, Molera. Looking for those their guys to get right here as they trail by four still here about midway through the second. Benson charged in on that one right off of the faceoff from Calder. This one will pop over top of the blue line. Azano is going to chase back and try to push off a Nor'easter's player as the puck hits the glass on the back side. That tracking Seahawks defense going after Colin Heinold. As this one will come all the way down, Calder in the corner. Azano comes in now as a second man, and the puck will horseshoe around to the opposite side. Azano, Calder got knocked down. Calder is getting sat on, and the puck comes back into the neutral zone. I bet he didn't take too many likes to that, did Calder. Shoemaker. Works with Azano on the backside boards, trying to get to Malera. The deflection attempt will come to Calder, and Calder will dump this one all the way down. Line change will get completed for the Seahawks with eight and change left to play here in the second. Tersoni sends that one across. As it deflected off of the side boards, can be carried by Kyle. Kyle right in front, an opportunity. They came off with a stick of Hoon Kim. Walensky in traffic. Kyle and nowhere to go as right there was the glove of Gerard. And again, that's Kyle the opposite direction. Chased by Smerley. Trying to go for Caden Kraus. Kim and Brunton. As they send this one into the corner and looks to be Jaden Price along with the eight of Colin Heinold. And this line for UNE has been part of the lethal line tonight along with that top line with Christy Fuss and Kuzmich that has caused all this trouble for the Seahawks. Shot attempt from Devine as that one went wide. And it comes all the way back down the ice right to the eight of Colin Heinold to pick that one up as he was able to move it along with the five of Alex Sheehy. There is a fix that needs to happen in the transition play where the puck is coming all the way down to Nor'easter's players with no white jerseys in motion oh, you'd be surprised i think the seahawks will be forechecking checking a bit more trying to get back into this game outstretched for caden kraus kraus was able to bump that one through looking for bomb and bomb in right in the middle and brunton got knocked down no call from the referees wide open in the center of the ice as he was receiving the puck open ice body check not one you like to take that's a missed interference call if you're trying to receive the puck as Brenton was right there. Just a bit of an insult to injury. The Seahawks don't really need anybody getting injured or anything like that in a 4 nothing game with the postseason coming up. Off of Jake Fuss, possessed by Brendan Kim. He will dump this one to the far side neutral zone and it will just get clicked off of the boards by Zimmer and sent down. This one will get carried out of the neutral zone looking for Fuss and getting rubbed off of the play. Penalty coming up as trying to go across for Fuss. Was well, that 13 of Ryan Kuzmich and Kuzmich knocked out of the play by John Hamill. Seahawks just not staying disciplined here. Just 
can't stay out of the box after generating that many chances and they'll have to kill another penalty and avoid another one going against them. So Hamill goes into the box for two for hooking. And five and change left to go here. And the second will put the Nor'easters back on the power play. The third Nor'easters power play of the evening. Discaneo. Sends that one across, mishandled by Heinold. Discaneo. From the opposite side, again Heinold, and that one's wide. Shuko. They're looking for Winslow in the center slot. Winslow calling for it up top, one times it, and that one may have gotten Mitchell's pad. Far side and then back again is that one for Heinold, sent high and wide. 55 seconds left to go in the advantage. Winslow. Sent off to the side, hard shot. Mitchell kicks that one away. Colin Heinold from the top. And they're gonna call this face off outside of the zone. As it clicks back up above this glass into the netting surrounding this St. George's Arena ice. Seahawks bench giving a couple shouts to Levi Mitchell. A couple huge saves there on a couple one-timers. Hard to see from the blue line. Face-off one by the Seahawks. Something we haven't said too many times tonight is that one gets sent all the way down. Allows them to be able to try to set the zone up and also peel off some time on this penalty kill. Zimmer chasing into the corner. Mitchell again making a couple of saves is right in front with Devine and an arm goes up and a penalty is going to get called and Garrett Devine your stick is a weapon sir you cannot use it to hit someone will go in the box two minutes for roughing the Nor'easters do it again they shoot down a power play of their own only three seconds left on the Hamill penalty, but now the Seahawks can go to work on the man advantage after a brief four on four. This is the chance they need to get back into this game. Three seconds of four on four, and he's lucky that he got away with two minutes because to me, that looked almost like the back of his stick was going into the stomach, and he's lucky he didn't get caught for spearing. Absolutely. Brunton. Shot, that one went wide from Seth Benson. Malera, right in the center slot as it will kick over top and get chased all the way down by Brendan Kim. Seahawks need to get something to set up here. Three minutes to go in the second period, still down four. Benson, Malera, Calder, along with Brendan Kim, Benson around the back side. Kyle, that one bounced underneath his knee and will hit the sideboard. Kyle's gonna pick this one up though. Kyle has Malera alongside with him. Offside oh, called as Benson's skate was on the other side of the blue line. Benson stretched that 6'4 body as long as it could go but just could not stay on sides. They had the Nor'easters drawn. That was a potential three on two. Face off one by David Zimmer. As they get that one to the far side boards. Wrap around attempt. Oh, 
set in for Shoemaker. Walensky. Zimmer in front was looking for Price and he couldn't get a full piece to it before it's kicked away. Mitchell will shepherd that. Carried with speed through the neutral zone by Hoon Kim. Price stretching for one. Shoemaker back at the blue line. He's open in space. So too is Walensky. Walensky has it over to Shoemaker. Shoemaker could have fired. Sends it into the corner again. They're going to go back to Walensky. Walensky pulls the trigger and that one hit traffic. Kevin O'Keefe in the way there for the Nor'easters. Penalty expires. We're back to five-a-side hockey in the final minute and change to go here in the second period. At least the Seahawks can take a positive to this and say if they get out of this next 66 seconds, they shut down the Nor'easters offense. Exactly. And we're going to meet with Garrett Smerley here in the second intermission. Be sure to ask him a couple questions about what the message is going to be for the Seahawks going into the third and what they can take away here from the second. We've seen crazier things happen in hockey before. This game is by no means over because it's 4 nothing. It would be if we're playing soccer. But in hockey, anything's possible. There's a wind up and a firing attempt is scooting right in front. we a couple of different Seahawks players. As Smerley, the aforementioned one, one of those two as he tracked across the zone with 10 Koppel. Paquette down in the corner. Smerley battles this one alongside the 19 of Curran and the 18 of Courtmanch in the final 10 seconds of the period. It will just get tracked back by Noah Shredder, and that'll bring us to the end of the second. At least we can say 0-0 zero, zero in the second period. It stays 4 nothing as we go to the third. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with Garrett Smerley in the second period intermission. You're watching Seahawks Hockey on Fans Only Sports Network. Welcome back to the Fans Only Sports Network. I'm Bobby Olson alongside Garrett Smerley. Garrett, tough first period. You allowed four goals, but the second period you didn't let up any. How'd you guys how let that happen? Well, we just went in, uh, kind of talked about our slow start, and we just went off script from the start. So uh, we just went in, uh, talked about a few things we could build on here, and came out, knew we had to play well for Levi. And, you know, we have the third here to make a decision whether we're going to come back or not. So hopefully we can uh, put a good period together. Excellent. And my next question was going to be, what was the message during that first intermission from Coach Zach Klen 
I mean, obviously we started off pretty slow. Um, morale was pretty low once we came in, so uh, Cloner kind of came in, got us fired up a little bit, called us out on our shit, and uh, you know that was pretty much it. Honestly, it wasn't great. I mean, it's definitely definitely big to uh, to have a coach that will boost the morale like that. And what do you think the words of wisdom will be going into the third here? I think just keep battling. I mean, UNE is a fast team, so uh, we know we got to stick to our script and just keep moving our feet uh, if we want to have a chance here. It's not over till it's over. Garrett, appreciate you guys meeting with us. Bobby Olsen here with the Fans Only Sports Network. We'll be back in about 15 minutes.
We're underway in the third period. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Pennsylvania Sports Network. 4 nothing, UNE over Salve Regina. And it gets sent around for Price. Dylan Price trying to push that one. Boxes are empty. We start five aside here in the third. A whistle and a stoppage of play. And we're going to get a special guest into the broadcast booth right now and welcome in a member of the Salve Regina Seahawks men's lacrosse team in the opening game of the season against UMass Boston coming up on Saturday afternoon, 1 p.m. Eastern time right here on Spanzoli Sports Network. And uh, thanks so much for joining us. Talk about the team and what you guys expect this year. You're, you're third on the Triple C. Yeah, um, we're really excited. We put together a good team this year. We have a lot of new and coming freshmen with talent. We have a lot of guys coming back who are hungry to want to win this championship. And we think this is going to be a good showing of how we've improved in our first outing against uh, UMass Boston. Yeah, you've got UMass Boston to open the season. Obviously, a very difficult team. We've seen how well they can do. What are you expecting out of that game? Um, we're hoping to give them a good fight. And we're hoping to... Uh, make it a close game and win. I mean, if possible, we could blow them out, but uh, we're really hoping to make this a good game and uh, really show everyone else in our conference that we're coming for it this year. It seems like you guys are balanced between all of the uh, grade groups, and you know, it's, it, but yet you look at the roster and it feels like it's still a young nucleus on this team. Yeah, um, it is a lot of young guys coming in, but um, I'm a sophomore myself, and I think like the seniors and uh, graduate students Junior's doing a great job taking care of this team and bringing all the young guys into our program. It's more of a family, and we're all making ourselves work harder. So I think a really good atmosphere coming into this uh, season. Without pumping yourself, who, who would you say are the two, top two guys to watch on your team? Top two guys to watch my team. Um, I'm going to say we got to see Max Bochamp out there. Um, he's always going to produce some offense that we're going to like. And uh, Joe Tolini. Uh, on the defensive side, I think it's going to hold everything together, and I think it's going to be a really good game to watch. Game number one of the season comes up Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern time, right here on Fans Only Sports Network. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you Saturday. Good luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> Eighteen left to go here in regulation. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. And a save made by Levi Mitchell. Lacrosse season in February. <laughs> Why not? So that's a little bit of a new feel for me. It's still going to be another month until high school season starts. But we're set and ready to go. That's a beautiful complex at top of field. Absolutely. Had the, uh, had the ability to play some football on there the past four years. So that was Yeah, you did. That yeah. was, a, was an excellent, excellent experience. And also the uh, Salve softball team plays there as well. So a big complex. And we shared that with the Rogers High School. But just a phenomenal, phenomenal experience it's been the past four years. The man of many trades, Bobby Olson, wide receiver for the Seahawks football team. Over the past year, you, you sad that it's over though? Oh, I'm definitely sad. I mean, I've been playing since I was seven years old, so better chunk of my life. I've been I've been putting on that helmet and shoulder pads every uh, every fall, so it's gonna be a different one this coming up. Hasn't really hit me yet, but I got a, a brother here who also plays football as well. So no uh, no thoughts about semi pro? No, no thoughts about that. I mean, I'd hope to surround my surround myself around the sport for a while. Hopefully, talking about it, but um, and writing writing for someone for it. But, um, I mean, just it, 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 it breaks my heart a little bit to, to never put on the pads again, but definitely uh, grateful for the time and the opportunities that were given to me. At least you got a chance to leave on your own terms. Exactly. I mean, the whole 2020 year was tough for everybody. I mean, sports media companies alike, nothing, nothing to report on for a good, a good chunk of time there, but I'm sure everyone, and I'm positive everyone, is glad that sports are back. Jaden Price got put in the box for UNE. And a shot to score! There it is, finally! As Seth Benson combines along for the Seahawks. 
And it's Benson in the 73 of Brendan Kim putting the Seahawks on the board. The bagel is broken. I said the Seahawks got to lean on their guys to get some kind of offense going. Who better than the first line winger, Seth Benson, able to put one home and the Seahawks cut that lead to three. It's not over, folks. Anything can happen in hockey. Benson's going to pick up his 10th of the season, his 22nd of his Seahawks career. Brendan Kim's going to get the assist. That is Kim's 18th assist of the season, his 30th as a Seahawk. And believe it or not, that actually continues to extend Brendan Kim's lead as the top assist getter for the Seahawks. And a slashing call about to come. So Joe Kyle holds the goal lead for the Seahawks this season at 14. Brendan Kim holds the assist lead at now 18. And here's an opportunity for the Seahawks again. Shoemaker works the backside line with Walensky. Able to keep that one as he got it around side Devine. Chance right in front, that's Hoon Kim. And that one will get kicked back out. Losing an edge was Walensky and it'll get taken away. Carried into the corner. As it pokes back out, Hoon Kim's gonna chase this one. Calder and Benson up top when that one went off of the pads of Gerard. That's on! Guess who? A rifle from the medalist, Mitch Walensky, his 12th of the season, and it's 4-2. Ripping twine, that's number nine. Mitch Walensky, I mean, right from the right point, the Seahawks had about 30 seconds of zone time before sniping that one home as Mitch Walensky and He's on an absolute tear right now. The Seahawks get a couple quick ones in about two minutes, and they've cut that lead to two. Walensky, the only Ocean Stater on this roster from Lincoln, Rhode Island, way up north from where we are, way down south here. And Walensky, who transferred over after being at the Air Force Academy for a couple of years, has really lit the lamp, not just here on the island. He lit it up for Team USA earlier this year in the university games. Absolutely, and he's just, again, one of those guys the Seahawks lean on whenever they need a little bit of offense. And, I mean, you saw it here, Exhibit Z here on home ice against the Nor'easters. This game has changed dynamics drastically from 4 nothing to 4-2 on two power play goals for the Seahawks, and an icing, and a stoppage of play. Benson's 10th, Walensky's 12th. For Mitch Walensky, that's career goal number 35 as a Seahawk. And counting. Off of the pads of Levi Mitchell. As this one scoots past Kyle. Shepherded around and exited by Shredder. Let's 
sent all the way back down by Kyle. Strutter tries to work that one. Nowhere to go is Chickering bodied out of the play. Seahawks have really changed the dynamic here in this third period. Still a little bit of work to do with 14 left to go. What an absolute difference in this third. Seahawks just flipping the script, as you said, wasting no time. And I asked Garrett Sremley what the message was, and he said, just keep fighting. And the Seahawks have done that here. The Seahawks, I'm pretty sure, wish that they could delete the first period from this game because if you take it from the opening face of the second period to now, it's 2 nothing Seahawks. Absolutely, the Seahawks again just changed the mentality of the game. And it's worked for them so far, but they got some work to do still. Still trailing by two. Shoemaker. Looking for bombing on the corner boards. That one is dispossessed, but however, it scoots past for Zimmer. Zimmer takes that one over the blue line into the corner. That one sent across, and it had Gerard guessing. Right back out of front, Gerard. A save made as Shoemaker right on the doorstep, trying to poke that one home. Azano there as well, too. Pressure in front. As this one will scoot over top and come down, icing is going to get called for the Seahawks, and the faceoff is going to come down in the corner to the right of Gerard. And you can just feel the energy on the Seahawks bench from what it was in the first. All the heads were looking down on the ice and on the bench, and now everyone's up and riled up, ready for this offensive zone faceoff. Wholesale change and a whistle, a stoppage of play. And they're gonna bring this one all the way back down once again. To the spot from whence we came and we do it over. Four, two. A third time might be the charm, Logan Calder. As that one got rifled just past. And Malera cycles around with it. Taken out by the Nor'easters. Devine to the backside boards. Nowhere to go for him. He dropped that one off. Hard shot by Devine, kicked aside by Mitchell. Malera overstepped one. Brendan Kim working defensively, and this one deflects up into the netting and out of play. We get a stoppage of play. Around the backside boards. Shredder. Take it away. And sent for a clearing attempt from Kroon. Josh Kroon, Brendan Kim work the backside line. Kroon drops that one through Kim as they were trying to move it for Braden Paquette. Hamill will come off. Minor line changes, they get Benson on. Around the backside boards, Benson will chase this one instead from the opposite side corner. It'll be sent, carried through. Here comes Seth Benson up the corner. Benson going for the wraparound. He's got Paquette in the center slot. 
right on top as everybody barrels through. Azano sent that one on the edge of Gerard. And this is a different Seahawks team that we saw in the first and now all these chances coming from what seems to be just a burst of energy and fight from the Seahawks team, which we've seen all year. But it's just excellent to see here as they fight what's ranked as now the number eight team in the country in Division Three in the Nor'easters. Kraus. Kept in by Kyle. Kept in again by Benson. This time it'll get pushed out of the zone. Through the neutral zone, they were looking for Benson to Caden Kraus. Kraus is gonna chase it to the sideboards. Kyle Azano will work with it. 10 and change left to go here in the third. Offside negated as it was taken back out of the zone and everybody was able to check out. There is still a lot of time left in hockey. I know you and I were chatting earlier about the Bruins playing tonight. I will always go back to this as reference 27 seconds against the Chicago Blackhawks. Oh, that was just... That was horrible, but... We'll take that here if Salve can pull that off. As long as, this, as the Seahawks take on the, the Blackhawks of that story. That was, that was an early memory for me, a core memory, one I usually like to forget. But I do have that Patrick Kane 88 hanging up in my closet. He's one of my favorite players. One of the greatest, certainly, in the game. It might be a Bruin in the coming weeks. You never know. Never know. Trade deadline is going to be crazy. Face-off win by Calder. Walensky. As this one tracks all the way back. Through the neutral zone, Malera. And that one will get pushed back again for Kim. Brennan Kim. Good outlet pass for Calder, and he got pickpocketed by Jared Christie. Brennan Kim. Hoon Kim. Brennan Kim. Fired one. That one came right off of the edge of Gerard's glove and right on the doorstep. Was Walensky once again. Hoon Kim. There's Walensky and Calder on the doorstep. Walensky's gonna go to the backside boards to chase this one. Barreling into the corner. Goes the 44 Smerly. Eight and change left to go here in the third. Paquette. Line changes ensued for both sides and this one will be whistled down for icing. As we mentioned, coming up Saturday here on Fans Only Sports Network, Salve Regina Seahawks men's lacrosse season opens from top of field, 1 p.m. Eastern time as they take on the UMass Boston Beacons. We'll have the game for you right here on Fans Only Sports Network. This is Paul, fansonlysports.com. That's fansonlysports.com slash Salve Seahawks to make sure you catch all of the Seahawks action. And of course, always follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever you got, at F-O-S-P-O-R-T-Z. Anthony Azano carried that one himself. And it will get kicked back for Damon Zimmer. 
Zimmer overlaps with Azano to the corner. That one came right across. May have gotten a piece of the post. I thought I heard a little clink off to my left. Kicked away by Gerard. Azano just had about three really good sequence of shots. As the Seahawks still trying to pressure here in the final seven. Azano almost had his first goal of the season last game. Almost. In fact, he did. But then he lost it. He got called back. And we were going ballistic here in the booth. Yeah, we, we have looked over that video time and time again. And I'm just like, I thought it crossed the line before the net came off its moorings. The referee called the net off of its moorings. To me, it looked like, I mean, and it was bang, bang. But it looked to me like that puck got just across the line. Oh, no bias whatsoever. And I mean that sincerely, but I thought it did too as well. Fortunately, nothing can, can change the fact that, but hopefully Zano can get one back. We do not wear black and white stripes as much as we wish we do sometimes from the booth. Joe Kyle sends that one back for Brennan Kim. Kim works the backside line with 10 Koppel. Along the side boards, Kyle tried to send one and Kyle's stick went to the left and the puck stayed right there. Final six, Kim. Drop Kyle from the other side and that one off of the chest plate of Gerard. You can hear the O's around the arena. Kyle was hunting for that top right hand corner. Just left it a bit low and comfortable save for Gerard, but not comfortable for the Seahawks fans around the arena. They thought that was good. Ryan Kuzmich, as he's bothered along the sideboards by 10 Koppel, Mitchell has to make a save and sacrificing the body a little there to help was Brennan Kim. Cycle around play for Fuss. Back up top of the blue line as it's kept by Sheehy. This one's gonna track all the way down, no icing called. Seahawks will pick this one up in the neutral zone. Malera and Calder can go to work along with Kroon. And Malera will dump this one down. Minor line change for the Seahawks as they get Price out there. So Kroon and Price work with the nine of Walensky and the 89 of Brennan Paquette. Hoon Kim, side boards for Paquette. Paquette looking for Josh Kroon up top. Price is gonna come in to help him out as Paquette is pinned to the boards. Had Shredder and Devine both on him and the puck pops free out into the neutral zone. Four and change left to go. A battle for it along the boards right in front of the UNE bench. As it will come all the way down behind Levi Mitchell. Azano. Down into the corner. Seahawks are moving the puck around but unable to get anything back into that center zone. UNE has certainly made an adjustment. Hamill. Hamill shoves a UNE player with the 17 of Shuko into the boards. Three and change. That one kicked off a Nor'easter's player and stayed inside the zone. Opportunity here for the Seahawks. As the puck pops up, Levi, Smerly. Levi Mitchell looking at the bench. 
He is. He's looking hard at the bench. He knows there's three minutes left. They're down by two. They're trying to draw up the play. You can hear Zach Glenn talking to his bench. If this puck gets down on the other side, they're going to go. They've got to get the puck out of the zone with 2.40 left to go. On the stick of Damon Zimmer. Got it into the neutral zone and it's kicked back in. Pushed back by Kuzmich. Smerly in the corner. Deflects that one up off of the glass. Into the neutral zone, sent back in by Dawson Ellis. This one will get it down. And there goes Mitchell. So Mitchell's out, six on five for the Seahawks in the final two. Malera will chase this one back into the neutral zone. Sends that one across for Brennan Kim. Kim gets that one past the outstretched stick of Shredder. And it comes back into the neutral zone once again. Malera worked that one for Kyle on the opposite side. Kyle. Nowhere to go. Pinned down into the corner. Comes back up top. Malera tries to deke a little bit. Can't go. Kyle pushes that one to the far side. And a save made by Gerard on the attempt from Calder. Seahawks took a long time to get anything going there. And took a long time to get Mitchell to the bench and get that extra attacker out chasing by two. You try to do that just a bit earlier. This is the, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you out there. This is the spot where you might want to call a timeout. They can't, they used it back in the first period. Right, and they still have their big dogs out there. Calder and Malera along with Benson as this one's gonna scoot all the way down the ice. We'll get the whistle for an icing. We'll go back from once we came and do it again. This is as good as a timeout you can get. Just the other team icing the puck down to the other end. Calder wins that one back for Kim. Kim sends that one across. 1-14. As time ticks away, Seahawks cannot afford to have the puck come out of the zone. Oh, no. Deflection. And so it will be down inside as the puck popped up into the net. It barely got over the glass there. You can still see it over there as a crutch. <laughs> Tries to dislodge the puck, and it does. Back to the blue line, kept in craftfully by Kim. Calder in front, and that one gets taken away, will be sent all the way down, goes wide. Chased back, Benson. Benson tries to work this one quickly with Calder. And an empty netter will come from the 13 of Ryan Kuzmich. And a penalty called against Johnny Malera. So Malera gets two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct. So two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct. I 
<laughs> Final 25 ticks as it's pinned along the backside boards. This game had everything wrong in the first period and everything right in the second and third. They'll have to do it right for three periods on Wednesday in the Commonwealth Coast Conference playoffs. And we'll be back here in Middletown. It's a twisted night for the Seahawks. 5-2 Nor'easters. We'll be back with the Seahawks postgame show coming up shortly. Back here on the Pandoli Sports Network post game show with Seahawks head coach Zach Klein. We said it. A little bit of technical difficulty there on the Seahawks postgame show with head coach Zach Klein. We talked about this on the broadcast. I feel like if you deleted the first period of this game, the second and third was really good. It was. You know, it, uh, we ran into a very good team tonight. Um, you know, we didn't get some bounces our way. Um, but, you know, it's, it's disappointing after, you know, coming out playing a good five, you know, first five minutes of the game there. Um, you know, then they got a little bit of momentum. We couldn't really stop it. Um, and it just got away from us. But, you know, the fight that we had in the third period, uh, that's what we need to go into playoffs with. Yeah, you, you take out that, that first period, obviously, when we talked about this, 0-0 zero, zero right. in the second period, you come out and essentially outside of the empty net goal, you beat them 2 nothing. We did. In the second period, I mean, we, we sort of delete empty netters yeah. when, they, when they happen. So what did you say to the boys in the locker room, really, that sort of changed that dynamic all of a sudden? You know, it, it, you know, we went in um, and, and we just said that, you know, we, we were not playing to our system. Uh, we weren't playing our style of hockey. We had a lot of lone wolves out there. Um, and we just needed to, to get to our systems, um, you know, and start playing together a little bit. You know, the, the little things uh, that we always talk about, winning the blue lines, making sure pucks get in behind them. Uh, we weren't doing those things um, until the third period. And then once we started buying into that, uh, we had some success off it. Um, and that's just what we need to keep building on. You change, you, you call the timeout about 10 minutes in to the first period, you go ahead and make that decision to change goaltenders. You change out Del Tufo for Mitchell, and Levi Mitchell puts on a show tonight. He, you know, he's a kid that he, uh, he's he been waiting. Um, and, you know, to see him jump in there and shut the door on them, um, I'm very happy for him. Very, very happy for him. Um, you know, he'll get the, the start on Saturday, um, and, you know, hopefully he can uh, just continue to build some confidence. Yeah, it seems like the uh, penalties in the second and third period caused by UNE helped you guys out a little bit. It seemed like your power play decided it wanted to click tonight. 
you know, it, it's something that we've been working on. Um, it, it, you know, it, they've got the one of the number uh, one of the top power plays in the country. We knew that going into this. Um, you know, and, and they had a couple power play goals. You know, when we got our opportunities in the first, uh, we weren't able to connect, but in the third period, we settled down. Uh, we were able to get some success there. You've got to go up to a venue that we're very familiar with, the Fanzoli Sports Network, to Nichols College. They play at Levy Ice Rink in Burrowville. Yep. That's your final game of the regular season, and then you come back here to St. George's on Wednesday for the playoffs. How do you keep the mindset just on nickels and not look forward to Wednesday yet? You know, we have the uh, the number four um, you know spot locked down, so we will be here back uh, on Wednesday night. Uh, but for us, it, it's you know just getting us to uh, to to go into Saturday with some confidence and come out of there with confidence. Um, you know, it, we just need to, uh, it's time of year where you're either golfing the next day or you continue playing. So, you know, we told the guys, uh, we absolutely love this group. Uh, we think the character's in there, uh, but we need to come and, and show it Saturday and then be ready on uh, Wednesday night. Quick turnaround. All right. Thanks, Coach. Really Thank you very it. much. Appreciate it. Thank you all for bearing with us today. It's been a rough weather outside. A nor'easter blew through the area here at St. George's and blew through this rink tonight against the Salve Regina Seahawks, a 5-2 final we will see you all back here Wednesday night on Fans Only Sports Network. For Matt Jones, all of us here at Fans Only Sports, thanks so much. Good night.